Today, a hope of many years standing is in large part fulfilled. It seems to me that if the Senate and the House of Representatives in this long and arduous session had done nothing more than pass this security bill, Social Security Act, the session would be regarded as historic for all time. Was there an overwhelming demand for Social Security in the 1930s when the law was adopted? Far from it. There was no public demand for it. It had to be sold. How was it sold? By the slickest devices of Madison Avenue. By imaginative packaging and deceptive labeling. The story of your Social Security goes back a long way. When this was a portrait of the future for millions of Americans. When they reached old age, they found themselves lacking the means to meet even their barest needs. So they were forced to become wards of public charity. Denied the dignity of a happy, earned security, their declining years became a period of hopeless waiting. Alone, these people could not work out the picture of a happy old age. Something had to be done. This is the key. Behind it are monthly payments that will be waiting for you if you retire after 65. Here's how it works. Old age and survivor's insurance is earned by most of us because most jobs are now covered by the Social Security Act. After working about a year and a half, you become insured for the next year and a half. From then on, you're insured for an additional year for each six months that you work. At the end of ten years of work, you are insured for the rest of your life. Here's what a, a uh, Social Security pamphlet said in 1936. It says, after the first three years, beginning in 1940, you and your employer will pay one half cents on each dollar you earn up to 3000 Beginning in 1943, you'll pay two cents. And finally, beginning in 1949, 12 years from now, you and your employer will each pay three cents on each dollar up to three thousand dollars a year i'm quoting from the pamphlet that's the most you will ever pay now compare that to the, to today's reality contribution by you and millions of your fellow workers the social security system consistently refers to the taxes you pay as a contribution now tell me, do you regard taxes as contributions? Plus, equal contributions made by your employers pay for the program. Social Security has a tax, as you know. That tax is supposedly divided into two parts. Half supposedly paid directly by the employee and half paid by the employer. The part for which the employer pays, writes the check is also paid by the employee. If you're hiring a man, What's the cost of that man to you? It's what you pay him in wages, including his part of Social Security, plus what you pay him in Social Security tax. You couldn't care less whether he cost you $150 a week, of which $20 was tax and 130 wage, or whether he cost you $150 a week, all of which was tax. Couldn't make any difference to you. Year by year, your wage credits build up. Credits that mean earned security for you and your family. When the time comes, whether it's 30 years from now or tomorrow, those credits will be converted into checks. Checks like these, but with your name on them. Checks which represent the benefits of insurance that is bought and paid for. Now, there's a very interesting, a very interesting article written by a fellow who works for the 
he, he formerly worked for the uh, National Center for Policy, Anal- for Policy Analysis in Dallas, Texas, and his fellow's name is Mike Warren. And he says that this spring, the Social Security trustees released their annual report on, sta- on the state of Social Security and Medicare programs. He says, Whalen says, that the combined unfunded liabilities of both programs come to $101 trillion. What does $101 trillion unfunded liability mean? Well, it means that in order for Congress to pay off all the promises it made, Congress would have to put in $101 $101 trillion in the bank today at a rate, paying a rate of interest of 6%. Now, keep in mind that the uh, our GNP only comes to $14 trillion a year. Federal old age and survivors insurance is exactly what the name implies. It is insurance. It's not an insurance program. It's a program which combines a bad tax, a flat tax on wages up to a maximum, with a very inequitable and uneven system of giving benefits under which some people get much, some people get little. Social Security is expected to collect less than it pays out after 2015 for the foreseeable future. Behind doors like these, you will find men and women like these, carefully selected and thoroughly trained helping you get the most out of your name, your social security number, your birthday, your wages. It took an enormous propaganda campaign by special propaganda groups to get those measures passed. There was no underlying public demand for those measures. On the contrary, the demand had to be created. It had to be developed. It had to be produced. And it was created, it was developed, it was produced by people who sincerely, I'm not questioning their sincerity, who sincerely wanted to see an expansion in the scope of government. 